on the dominion mandate. That's the series, dominion mandate. Um, last week we talked about having a dominion in our lives, you know, walking in dominion, personal lives. This morning we moved um, a step further, talking about dominion or the mandate of dominion just as seen in Genesis chapter 1. But we said in the first service that you can really not understand the dominion mandate except you understand critically the kingdom. This morning, uh, we, are, we introduced the kingdom of God. So we'll just do a little bit of it, then we move over to another thing. So, but we just, we just need your spirit with us. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 to 28. Genesis chapter 1. Let's be as quick as possible. Genesis chapter 1. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over all, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Verse 27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed man, and God said, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over everything that moves on the earth. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Isaiah chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. Isaiah chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. We'll just read it and then we'll move. Isaiah chapter 2 from verse 1 to 4. The word that Isaiah the son of Amos saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now it shall come to pass in the later days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow to it. Many people shall come and say, come, shall come and say, and let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his path. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And then we also read Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 30, where the scripture was talking about a master. The scripture said, Jesus said, that the kingdom of God is like this. A, a certain man went to a journey. But before he went to a journey, he called his servants. He gave them talent. Some five, some two, and one. And the one he gave five, they did business with it. And multiplied and got five. The one he gave two, got extra two. The one he gave one, hid his own on the ground and brought one back and told his master. And when the master asked him, said, what did you do with my talent? He said, I know you're a wicked man. You sow, you reap where you have not sown. So I just kept it. And Jesus said, look at you. Oh, you know I reap where I don't sow. Why did you not put my money in the bank? At least I would have gotten interest from it. He said, take what he has and give to the one who has mine. And what did he say? Put him in utter destruction. But those that have more will be given to them. And those that have not, the one they have will be taken away. The kingdom of God is the realm of God's rulership. The sphere of his control, where his will, his plans, and his purpose are enforced. And God has established his kingdom. Jesus taught us how to pray. And he said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as what? It is in heaven. 
So what it means is that God ruled over the affairs of the heavens. He then created the earth so that he would rule. So he wanted to increase his domain. He wanted to increase his reach. And for him to rule over the earth, he, he brought man and said, okay, take care of the earth for me. So man can only exercise dominion when they are in direct authority and under direct control of God. Any man that is rebellious to God cannot exercise the dominion mandate. Now, I told you a few things that you need to know about the kingdom, that the kingdom of God will fill the whole earth. I told you that the kingdom of God will forcefully be advanced right from the day of John the Baptist. The kingdom of God suffer it. What? Right. And the violence taken it by what? And I said something very critical. If you are not a person of spiritual warfare, you cannot thrive in the kingdom. Not physical. We don't move with swords or guns, bombs, tanks. We move in spiritual warfare. Bended knees, enforcing the kingdom of God. So, if you want to have dominion, you must be a person of prayer, whether you like it or not. You see, you have not tasted real success until the enemies come, come to you and tell you either you join us or we frustrate you. They are more, listen to me. If you get to the top of the mountain, you must join one kingdom. No one remains in neutral for a long time. Are you listening to me? You must either, is there, a deep, is there a middle ground between light and darkness? So you must choose the kingdom of light or the kingdom of darkness. Now, I encourage you to join what? The kingdom of light. The kingdom of heaven. And for you to have that kingdom mindset, we said is a default setting. Where your perspective and your standpoint, your viewpoint, natural now to you, is the kingdom of God. We wake you up in the morning and tell you to make a decision. The first thing you consider is God's kingdom. Now, that's what we're talking about. You're a kingdom person now. When you start considering some other things, it says, seek ye first. Someone says, seek ye first. The kingdom comes first. You want to marry? Kingdom. That's why you will come to sanctuary department. Yes, sir. Some people have already come to sanctuary department. Okay, some have gone to where? Okay. But some have gone to sanctuary. Seek the kingdom first. Some have gone to prayer. Some. A lot. Protocol. But on a more serious note, the kingdom first. Business, the kingdom first. That's why we don't do every type of business. Because God will not be God is not glorified in everything. Are you listening to me? The kingdom is not also glorified in everything. You can't be a froster and say you are bringing the glory to God. What are you bringing glory to God? Everything that must be brought to God must be pure. So seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. You see it? It's not just the kingdom. It's righteousness. You cannot just see the kingdom of God without seeking his righteousness. His kingdom comes with righteousness. Mm. Now, the kingdom of God cannot be shaken. And it has no end. Listen to this. See, whose voice then shook the earth? But now he had promised, saying, Yeah, at once more, I shake not the earth only, but also the heavens. And this world, yet once more, signified the removal of the things that are shaken, and as of the things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. There are things that cannot be shaken. If every other thing shakes, there are certain things that cannot be shaken. Economies can shake. Things can shake. Cryptocurrency is a shake already. If you shake here, you shake here. Everything is a shake. Oh. We don't understand. Today they tell us this one has won. Tomorrow they tell us this one. Today you are, cry you are, you are, you are smiling to the bank. Before you get to the bank, you are crying. Wherefore, we received a kingdom that cannot be moved. 
Wherefore, we received a kingdom that cannot be moved. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 26 to 28. Let us have grace whereby we serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Wherefore, we received a kingdom that cannot be moved. God's kingdom cannot be shaken. Let me tell you, regardless of what is happening around, his kingdom cannot be shaken. What he stands for, what he will do, he will do. If you like, change governance. In fact, if you like, let the next person be worse than this boy. The kingdom of God cannot shake. But the next person will never be worse than this man. That's why after the service, please go downstairs to the children's church. If you have not done your PVC, we can shake the kingdom of Nigeria. So go downstairs after the service and do your PVC. Free of charge, you should celebrate Jesus now. Huh? Huh? Ah, no, I cannot come prayer. I can only come vote. So please, come, let's go and get uh, PVC so that our vote can count. The kingdom of God cannot be shaken. Now, the kingdom of God is everlasting. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 8. But unto the Son he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thy throne, O God, is forever a scepter of righteousness. The scepter of your kingdom. The kingdom of God is superior to the kingdom of darkness. Mark chapter 16, verse 17. It says, All these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Stronger, greater. Be demon, belia, whatsoever it is. The kingdom of God is greater than that. Philippians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. See, wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above world, every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of the things in heaven and the things where? In earth. And things where? Under the earth. That every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord. to the glory of God the Father. The kingdom of God is superior. How do you develop this kingdom mindset? You learn through discipleship. Mark chapter 16. Well, give me Matthew chapter 28, verse 19. Quick, quick, quick. I think that, that scripture gives us a better. Go therefore and make disciples of every nation, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of what? The Holy Spirit. You cannot develop a kingdom mindset until someone teaches you. And it can only happen through discipleship. It's not coming to church. Some people think it's coming to church. Since we started bringing everybody to church, have they developed kingdom mindset? Until people are trained and discipled, they cannot carry the kingdom as priority. Until you are discipled, you cannot carry the kingdom as priority. The kingdom of God is hard stuff. And hard stuff needs training. Because your mind has a way of wondering and telling you that you need to live for yourself. 
You need to make yourself happy. But until you are trained, you cannot set your mind to the things that matter. If we leave you, you'll just be taking milk and uh, honey every time. But the baby at some point needs to eat bones. Discipleship is hard one. When you know that God has called you to be a soldier of Christ, you are now moving from a child to a son, maturing. It's when you mature that you can take and fly the banner. Yesterday they gave Vatiku the banner. I said, you're going to fly the banner of PDP in the presidential election. All God is saying is that you're going to fly the banner of the kingdom on earth. He will not just give it to babies. Give it to sons who are mature. And maturity only happens in the kingdom through discipleship. Go and make disciples. He didn't say just go and evangelize. He said go and make disciples. Train these people thoroughly. That's what Jesus did to his disciples. For them to carry the gospel of the kingdom across the earth, they had to be with Jesus for three and a half years. To the point that they loved not their lives, even unto death. They gave it for the cause of the gospel. Only a disciple man can do that. You see, you can love God. You can think you love God and deny him. Oh. Because when the fear of death comes, or when you are properly discipled, before you have finished your life, you put it at the cross. For us to live is... Someone will say, someone will tell you, I will kill you. You cannot kill a dead man. Yeah, that's why, that's the highest threat someone can make to me now. I will kill you. Are you trying to kill someone who has already died? Can't kill a dead man. If you come and see the man that is dead, what are you going to do? Can't kill me. I, I already died to Christ. You see this life you are seeing now, you cannot take it again. <laughs> Hello? You cannot do what? Ah, you cannot take it again. This one, the one, the, that one that you thought you could take, I gave it out at the cross. Say, God, take this one. Intentionally. You know, there are certain things that not, God will not do for you. You have to do it. Jesus said, I think in John chapter 10, he said, you see my, oh, you see this my life. I gave it out. I laid down my life. Nobody forced him. There are certain things, no matter how much you have, you will have to take that decision yourself. Even if God wanted people to come and represent him, it was Jesus that made a conscious decision. How? Why? He's a son. So without some of this mindset, you cannot carry the kingdom. Should we talk about wealth now in the kingdom? You know, I said it in the first service a little bit. Sometimes you struggle for wealth because you don't understand where you are. If a mission sends an ambassador somewhere, they will cater for his needs. They will provide basic things. They will give him housing. They will give him a lot of things. They will, you know, Sometimes they will give you a vehicle, sometimes they will give you certain things, you know. Anything that happens to you, they will refer back to the host station. They take care of you well. No matter where you are, they will make sure they have a working relationship with the, the host nation so that, you know, you're comfortable because you are the pride of that nation at that point. Until you understand that you are sons of the kingdom, there are certain things you will not live in the realities of it. When I understood that, I found out, okay, I can never be broke. Until heaven gets broke, then I can be broke. And heaven will never get broke. He said, according to his riches in glory. That's how I, I spend. According to his what? Riches in glory. That's how money comes. According to his riches in glory. Through who? Christ Jesus. You see, this one, when we say things like this, don't worry, it's not everybody that will understand because the word of God is revelation. Which one you catch if you live in the reality of it? 
according to his riches in glory. Man of God, according to his riches in glory. Do you understand what it means? It's not Central Bank. It's not BVN. After all, there are needs that will come to you. You solve them, and yet you don't have that kind of money in your account. Uh, according to his riches in glory. If we look at our bank account, there are certain things we cannot do. Only my account officer understands according to his riches in glory. If we spend or do things according to our bank account, we cannot achieve much. Oh, you don't understand. How many times have you done things, achieved things, that you were greater than your bank account times 10? That's when you understand according to his riches in glory. Bank account can be very deceitful, but that's not where I work. That's not where I take financial gains from. Very deceitful, sir. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to open up your mind now to this light. You are starting to understand what I'm talking about. Needs come. You have only 10,000 naira balance. That need, if we go through it, 500,000, how did you achieve it? According to his riches in glory. <laughs> you must understand this. Then, after you, t- you don't tell your bank, stop deceiving me. That's how we also tell our bodies to stop deceiving us. When we say we are strong, we are strong. And our body is feeling fe- feverish. No. By his stripes. So, I am healed by what? Not by doctor. So, when sickness comes, I take the stripes. Ah. Uh, it's the kingdom for me. It's the mindset for me. Because I know that as a son of the kingdom, I have provisions. As a son of the kingdom, as an ambassador, as an active partner of God in the kingdom, there are certain things that are my rights, privileges. I call upon them. I enjoy them. It's not, see, and you know, the thing with privileges, there are, are certain things that until you call upon them, they can't serve you. So you go to a hotel now, for example. If you're a traveler like I, I am, most hotels will give you complimentary bre- breakfast. But if you don't wake up in the morning to eat it, it will go. So if you're one of those people that travel with me, even if that sleep wants to come, they will say, Pastor, I have to go and take this breakfast. They cannot. We are, uh, it's included in what? It's inclusive. You see somebody who go down, take breakfast, come back and sleep. Because he's included. Do you live for? You go to plane. You are doing big boy. They give you food. Carry it and put it beside you. He's included. It's part of the package. You go to a beautiful place. You don't want to snap picture. Maturity. But the view is part of the package. Snap picture, beg. Don't mind them. Then maturity put some people. Your maturity will lead people into being sad this though. Don't worry. Ah. Uh, you use your, your own money to subscribe. Get download WhatsApp. You don't want to do status now because you are mature. It's part of what you paid for. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Don't do it like a TikTok. Ah, enjoy it. So there are certain things that come with the package of the kingdom. Enjoy those things. Now I want to teach you something. I, I was something I said in the first service. Now the kingdom that God has two agendas, true of us, true of us. God has two. Uh, the kingdom of God has two agendas, true of us. The first one is relationship, which is what. Reconciling mankind with God. And the second one is what? Rulership, which is what? Having what? Dominion on earth. People forget. When we talk about dominion Monday, people forget about reconciling men to God. And some people forget about dominion and are just reconciling men to God. Now let me tell you this. No matter how much of an evangelist you are, 
if you don't engage in active discipleship, you will never fulfill the dominion mandate. Because only discipled people are well equipped for the dominion mandate. A man that is not taught properly will never achieve God's purpose for his life. Listen, Gabriel, God did not make a mistake by telling them to go and raise disciples. He would have just told them, go and evangelize. The mandate is not evangelism. The mandate is discipleship. Because only mature people understand the agenda of the kingdom. Let me show you why. Everyone look up to me here. An undiscipled man that believes there is God and goes and gets fame and gets money will, be, will end up most times being a disappointment to God. Because he does not understand God's will, God's plan, God's purpose. When, when you don't understand God's will, God's plans, and God's purpose on earth, you will live for yourself. You will not understand the reason for God's provisions. Oh, I think I'm talking to the wrong people here this morning. That's why you will see someone who is a Christian. Right where he is. Christians are, are being marginalized. Right where he is. He cannot stand for the, God, for the kingdom. So leave them, leave them, leave them. Don't you know that God only raised you up for that sake? You are there. You have influence. And they're marginalizing the kingdom. See some of them, they'll be in, in, in schools. They're lecturers. They'll be right, right in front. Let me tell you. If God puts you in a place as a lecturer and you're standing for God, regardless of their gang up, God put you there. Only God has the ability to take you away from that place. That's what people don't understand. They'll tell you now, if I say something, if I stand for the gospel, if I stand for the body of Christ, they'll chase me out. Who put you there? When God installs a man, no being has the right to take him. That's what, people don't, that's what they don't understand. They now say, I cannot. Eh, let's just be following them. Let's just be following them. You are called to be discipled so that you can stand for the king. And now, when God puts you there, what God is expecting you to do is multiplication. Now, discipleship bets multiplication because when you are discipled, you disciple other people. So God puts you, maybe as a lecturer, it is expected that through you, people like you will be replicated in that institution. You are in the electronics market. God is saying that through you, people like you will be in the electronics market. You are in, in the pharmaceutical industry. God is saying, through you, people like you will be in the pharmaceutical industry. That is why discipleship is core to the dominion mandate. Because if we don't disciple, we cannot replicate. Are you listening to me this morning? A man who has not been trained who has not been discipled, will not understand that he's a steward. Open your Bibles to the book of Matthew chapter 25. Now I introduce to you another topic, the dominion mandate and stewardship. Is God blessing someone this morning? Now let me tell you this before I continue. Make yourself available for the kingdom of God to use you. God is not looking for the qualified. He's only looking for those who are available. What qualification do you think we had? We were only available. And then God qualified us. And God put his stamp on us. What qualification do you think you will have? For God to use you. A man will say, man of God said, I'm an unlearned man. I'm weak. And God said, hey, you are a mighty man of valor. You might be saying, I'm nobody, I'm nobody. Just hand yourself over to God. And God will use you to do great things, mind-blowing things in this generation. I've seen people that God have used. One thing that is very critical about them, they were nothing before.
If God were to put down a qualification requirement for usability, say, even if you get five PhDs, you still know nothing. So how can you reason with God? And yet he's calling you, God, let us reason together. No worry, God will get down to your level, but when he, once he's done with you, oh, you'll be what we call a wonder to your generation. Now, when you read the book of Matthew chapter 25, from verse 1, from verse uh, 19 to 30, Jesus started that by saying that the kingdom of God is like this. Go to verse 18. I think that's what he says. He says the kingdom of God is like this. So he's telling you how the kingdom of God is. Every man of God, every man born by God, born of the spirit, is first a steward. I don't want that. Every man born again is first a steward. A steward is like a servant, a chief servant, if you want to go further into defining stewardship. And every steward has responsibility. Someone say responsibility. A certain things required of you. When we look at the dominion mandate, we think it's just about exercising authority. No, the dominion mandate actually, a lot of it falls to a responsibility. Some people think that the dominion mandate is a call to rule people. It's a call to serve. It's a call to do something. Now, as a Christian steward, you are to watch over what the Lord has placed over your hands. Authority and influence. Look at what Psalm chapter 24 verse 1 says. It said, the earth is what? The earth is what? And all it contains. The world and those who dwell in it. So God gave us the world to handle, to take care of. It's our responsibility to manage this earth, to handle the things on this earth, to handle the affairs of this earth. Is your responsibility. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28. You'll find out that man was charged with a privilege. It's first a privilege. Because God can do it himself. And God called you to give it to you. So it's a privilege. You, you hold it with honor. And then responsibility of taking dominion over the earth. So it's your responsibility to subdue. So if you're not subduing, you're not doing much. If you're not having dominion, you're not doing much. You're not carrying out what God told you to do. Listen carefully. I want you to understand this. Oh. Forget what we're saying now. You think you have option. You have no other option. Because at the end of the day, the master will return. If you behave like that servant who just thinks that it's not my business, the master will return. You have no other option than to be faithful in what the master has handed over to you. There's no other option. Don't go hide it. You, have, you must work. That's why... One of the people to pity in this life is a lazy man. Are you listening to me? It's better you pity a lazy man more than an ignorant man. Because a man who is ignorant, when you expose him, well, people can be lazy, they know a lot of things, but they're just lazy. They don't want to do anything. Now, I want to also tell you that 
Stewardship is not a license for autonomy. What do I mean by autonomy? You cannot stand on your own. You must stand under the direct control of Christ. You must stand and obey the laws of Christ. And you are held accountable. You are responsible for your actions. Now, if we increase faithfulness in stewardship, we'll get results. And the more a believer takes responsibility, the more the believer gets authority, influence, and control over the things of God. Let me explain this to you. Everybody look up to me here. God doesn't start by giving you a nation. People will pray, give me this nation or I die. And you have not gotten that village. You have, got, you have not gotten that community. God starts by giving you a little. So he that is faithful in little will be what? Faithful in much. So the more you remain responsible and faithful, in something the more it gives you more control so let me give you an example the way we are right now god is saying i give you i'm giving you money in thousands i'm giving you influence in two or three people in four people in ten persons in hundred persons use it well so that i can give you one thousand people to submit to you use it well so that i can give you five thousand people to submit to you i'm not talking about to church i'm talking about generally Use it well so I can hand over millions. You see, I have these millions. I can send it to you. What are you doing with the ones I sent to you? Your voice is heard all over Onicha. God is saying, hey, do well with Onicha. I can give you an ambassador. I can give you Southeast. You are doing business. Do well where you are. Represent me well in Onicha. Represent me well in that little market. I, I have the capacity to make you the biggest in the southeast. I can even give you the biggest in Nigeria, in Africa. But well, can you represent me first in Anambra State? Little town hall meeting, you will disappoint me. And you want me to take you to the national level, so you give me a national disgrace. The more we take responsibility and are faithful, the more God gives us more. You want to command the wind, you want to command the rain. The one God gave you, how are you using it? Are you not using the one God is giving you to just increase your pot belly? Yes, that is the truth. That is the truth. There are certain people that can never assess certain things because they are stagnant in the one God gave to them. It's so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate. That we don't understand that the dominion mandate is stewardship, a call to proper stewardship. Now, the spread of responsibility among faithful Christians amounts to the spread of dominion of Christ. So the more faithful Christians we have in Nsube, the more we have the spirit of Christ. Everyone look around. Turn left, turn right. Look back, look forward. Within the week, the people in this room must have gone from one end of Nsube to another of them, and that end of Nsube. Within the week, the people in this house if we're all faithful, what army again is God looking for in this Nsube? The dominion of bandit. Faithful people. When Jesus is talking about the army, everybody is not enlisted in the army. 
Are you in the Lord's army? That's a question to ponder. Faithful people. Faithful people. Very quickly, three things from this parable. Three things, quickly. I will just take one. Three things. The first thing I want to show you is the reason for failed stewardship. The first thing I want to tell you is the reason for failed stewardship. Number one is fear. Someone say fear. fear. The master gave this servant a talent and he was afraid that he would lose it. He went and hid it. He was afraid. Fear can make believers they will not take decisions. If I stand for God now, they will cancel me. If I stand for God now, they will sack me. If I stand for God now, it's too early now. They just appointed me. They will say I'm fighting the authorities. If I stand for God now, they will say this. You are afraid. Promotion does not come from the north, neither from the south. Promotion comes from where? Come, comes from who? You are afraid for what man can do to you. Not knowing that God was the one who set you up there. Surely they will what? But if they don't gather in the name of the Lord, what will happen? They will scatter. Leave that fear. If the Lord has placed you there as an ambassador, don't worry. He will take care of you. Heaven knows how to take care of us. Heaven takes care of me. I'm not afraid. You want to cancel me? Come and cancel me. We know get shame again. No? Ah, a dead man. Is he shameful? Which shame again? Ah, uh, no understand. That scroll fell out from our eyes when we received the Holy Ghost. That scroll fell from our eyes. Fear. It's no longer there. Who are you? He that is in me is greater than who? And listen, sometimes additional responsibility makes us fearful, you know. Ah, we're going to leave our comfort zone. We're going to be doing more than what we're doing and we don't like it. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Take up more responsibility. Be more of a Christ ambassador in where you are. Have dominion. Be faithful. Number two is laziness. Laxity. Oh, this man said that this man is a wicked and a lazy servant. He doesn't want to work. He don't want to do anything for God. We say, come up and do this. He said, no, can't do it. I don't have strength to do it. The same people who run away from spiritual exercises when it's time to gossip, when it's time to do things that will exact more strength and less pleasure and more pleasure you will see them with strength. The same person who will say, I don't have time to do this, I don't have time to do this, come, let's go now and club. You have the strength. Three hours, he's still dancing. Come, let's pray now. Two minutes, he's sitting down. Oh yeah? Uh, one more left. Phew. 20 hours, he's dancing. Laziness. Uh, what's that song again? <laughs> Laziness is losing strength or having no strength in important things. See, laziness is not weakness. Are you listening to me? Laziness is not what? Go and check lazy people. They are very active in irrelevant things. Pressing for. Sleeping. They have strength in sleeping. Don't you know it takes strength to sleep? After all, when you sleep, are you not tired of sleep? You know, some of you are not tired of sleeping. Some people are not tired of You know the food. They all go, sleep, they wake up, take water, go back. <laughs> they, they, that sit at home for three days. I could, I could not stay at home. Say, how can I be sleeping? I'm sleeping and sleeping and sleeping. There's something wrong. You don't sleep. What? Left. I came to office. I walked that day. 
not my fault. I've learned to be active. But you must take rest though, before you die, before your time. Not laziness. People are weak in important things. Important things of the kingdom, you are very weak. You don't care. Let's go for evangelism. They will not go. Now, don't worry. Fearless concert. All some of these are members who are not coming. They will come home because they will dance unto the Lord. Let's go for outreach. You only see a handful of people. Let's go and disciple people. You don't care. Laziness. Now, let me show you this. There is something within the fallen state of man. The fallen nature of man that makes man lean towards the easiest part of life, the easiest part in life. When they bring man two options, there is this thing in the fallen part of man that wants that man wants to go to the easiest option. It's not good. My brother told me very early, very early in my formation stages, he said if they give you two options, the long road and the short road, take the long road. The short road will disappoint you. I learned that thing very quickly. Don't always lean on the shortest and the easiest part of life. Most times, those paths lead to destruction. And laziness is cancerous. Oh my God, it can eat you up. You know another one? The man was a proud man. He's a proud man. You know why he's a proud man? You know why he's a proud man? Why is he a proud man? Eh? Sorry? I can't hear you. Give him the mic now. Praise the Lord. I said he confronted his boss telling him. No, 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 no. He's foolish for doing that one. Because, yes. Because he'll be asking himself, oh, this man is only one thing and gave to me. He gave me very little thing. Let me keep it for him there. Let him come and collect it. It is pride that makes you think that there is this work that is too small for you. A homie. You see this people that will keep telling you a homie. They can't achieve much. A homie. A homie. Now, watch. Once we are going live, I'm going to sing. If there is no life, I'm not going to sing. I only sing for life services. I'm a VIP singer. Once it's second service, I do. First service, count me up. That's pride. He did not know. It's only a matter of time that one will turn to two, two will turn to four, four will turn to eight. Eight will turn to what? Sixteen will turn to what? Thirty-two. But I know my soul. Thirty-two will turn to what? Let me not embarrass you now. Sixty-four will turn to what? Wonderful. It's okay. I know it's 256. God bless you. Drop your calculator now, man of God. Drop your calculator. Pride will stand in your way of success. God gives you kingdom assignment. But you think that you are anointing it's flowing like a river. You, should, you have outgrown that one. You should not be doing it again. That's why pastors now, a lot of them, they don't do one-on-one -on -one evangelism again. It must be crusade and outreach. Hello? What we call it in this church is shoulder pad. Do you know where I am? Is this song that you started dancing now that is shoulder pad, pride dance, right? Uh -huh. See, yeah, you see. See him, see him now. Look at Pride. Proud man. I just, there's this lovely song I call a proud man. Listen carefully. If you do great things for God, for the kingdom, remove pride. God will require you to do things that you think you've outgrown. For the sake of the kingdom, there is nothing you cannot do for him. Are you listening to me? 
There's no place you cannot pitch your tent just for the kingdom. That's the people. That's why we say that discipleship is important. When you are discipled, you find out that you, you have no ownership of your life. So you don't dictate the surroundings, the environment. God says, we're moving here. You move now. Is it not now? If AC is not in church, you won't come to service next Sunday. If the man of God is not speaking and he is clear, you can't come to church. You only come to service on Sunday. Wednesday service is for boys. You only accept programs where their, their, their sound system is all right. If not, you're not going there. Man of God, you know how many years I've cracked my voice in the name of preaching? She no, she no, no, no. Please, look for people in your level. You see, I've seen people's ministry destroyed because of that. I've seen people ministry destroyed because of that. Pride. Uh, uh, time, time, time. Time. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Stand to your feet, everybody. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If the kingdom of God is first, nothing will matter, even pride or anything. Who you are, because you remember, you are who you are because God made you. All you have, God gave you. Who you are, God made you. So why are you proud? Why are you proud? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek ye first. In your business place, seek first. In your schools, seek first. In your companies, seek first. Everywhere, seek first. The kingdom of God and His righteousness. Have this kingdom mindset. Finally, beloved, whatsoever or wherever you are, the Lord has placed you there to be a watchman, to be an ambassador, to be a representative for Him. And that little place, please handle it well. Because God can, God will take you to another level. I said, Pastor, Pastor said you should be taking care of people who are coming from location. Handle it well so that God will give you a big location. Mm. Handle it properly. The youth president, God is saying, handle your youth presidency well. Do it well. You don't even know whether you even be a national youth president. Not even in church, outside too. And that's what God is saying. That's what God is saying. Handle it with care because the prerequisite for much is faithful and little. Handle it well. You want to be a president, you have not functioned anywhere, you just come to be a president. You have not served powers that be. Handle the affairs of the kingdom properly. Don't toil with God's kingdom, don't toil with what God has given to you in your hand. Now, listen. The more you toil with what God gives to you, the more you close doors for your enthronement. And that's why it's very careful. You should be very careful. God is giving you resources. God, you see, they come, the church property, they give it to you. Uh, the, the kingdom's wealth, they give it to you. They're using it anyhow. Come and take one, let me see. Did you not hear? If I give you meat to share, if I call you again, it means that you did well. You don't need to ask me. Is that not true? God gives you something. Handle it well. That little office, handle it well. Stop saying that I know I can do more. No, be doing more. God knows. Hello, 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 hello. The David was busy handling shepherd in the wilderness. He was building his regime. God saw. God is the one who enthrones. And then God said, that boy somewhere, bring him. His, boys, his brothers were doing big boy. I have strength. I have army. God is saying, I searched I search the heart and the intent. And I have chosen for me a king over Israel. Not these ones that even prophet somewhere, they see, they look, they judge from what they see. I, God, I see the intent of the heart. God is about to lift somebody up here. 
Oh. I said, God is about to lift somebody up here. Amen. I said, God is about to lift somebody up here. Amen. For the kingdom's sake, I pray. Let your promotion reach you. Amen. I pray that you receive wisdom for faithful stewardship. Amen. It's very important. So that God can give you more. So God can give you more. How much I use, God knows. The more he gives me, the more his work progresses in my life. And it's not just about COT, it's not about life of it. I'm a kingdom man. I move from church to church, helping the body of Christ. I'm a kingdom man. I'm a humanity man because part of his kingdom. Because God's plan includes humanity. Hey. Are you listening to me? Yes. You know you cannot kill me. Because I'm, a, I'm an active player in God's agenda. You know the kind of protection I receive? If you want to know, go and plan it against me. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. You'll be shocked how many people follow me. And sometimes when you see me and you think, uh, we say things and uh, think we get away with it. We don't just say things and get away with it like that. And we find a car, you Lift up your hands, everybody. In you will dwell the Spirit of God. Amen. The Spirit of Jesus is bold. Amen. The strong spirit is not intimidated by circumstances or gang up. I ask any gang up against you because you stand for the kingdom. Today we destroy that gang up. Amen. There are people that have planned evil against you because you're a Christian, because you stand for the kingdom. I stand as God's servant. Now, confusion is in their camp. Now. Amen! I'm telling you the truth. This is just, this is, yeah, yes. that camp just got confused. Amen! When you report to work this week, you will see the confusion now manifest. Amen! Do you know that if you're a kingdom person, that you should be the envy of the world. Your life will be a testament that the kingdom of God comes with glory and power. Amen! Oh. I wish we are on the same page. Some of you are not on the same page with me. I say your life will be a testament that the kingdom of God is a kingdom of glory and power. Amen! Whatsoever has restricted you from showing forth the glory of the Father, the glory of this kingdom, from today, let that covering be taken away. Amen! Amen. Jesus brought your victory, brought your dominion. He reconciled us. Say, through one man's sin, death reign, but through another life. We will reign with it. Is that not true? It's raining. Raining. Is it not kingship? Is it not dominion? Everything that used to have dominion over you, from today you start to dominate those things. Amen. Lift up your voice and give God all the praise. Father, we give you praise. This week is blessed for your sake. Amen. Amen. Everything you touch this week will work for you. Amen. Amen. The Lord will speak up for you. Amen. Amen. Even where the voice of men will cease, ministering angels. They will speak on your behalf. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you something that happened. Uh, one man brought something, a business to me, brought something to me. Say, man of God, buy at this price. I said that two weeks ago, I stood outside my corridor. I said, I want this thing. But when I checked, the prices were too much. I was in my office. I want to see you, Pastor. Say, come and see me. The same thing I wanted, he brought to me way cheap. I, I'm, I'm so I'm telling you, it's way cheap. What, half the price. When you call for things, they will respond to you. Amen. Amen. See this week, 
when you ask for things, they will come to you. Amen. Lift up your voice and give God all the praise. Thank you, Father, Jesus. We give you thank you, Father. Father, we give you praise. 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 We give you praise.